Hey, here's a quick intro, everybody. It's John Thramer here with the At The IP Show. Uh, I'm going to get my ugly mug off the screen here momentarily. Uh, but I just wanted to pop on and say hello. We're going to do a brief broadcast today of some deep sky objects before the big old moon rises up here. Now, my sky conditions aren't that great. I do have some very thin clouds moving through the area, so the thing called transparency is probably not doing too well. Um, however, we are going ahead and sharing some galaxies right now. And this right here up on the screen is actually the Black Eye Galaxy or NGC, I'm sorry, M64. Yeah, M64. So let me go ahead and get my camera off here so we can get more of our image. So that is what we are viewing there. And as you can see, we are doing 45 second exposures here with our Starlight Live software. I have begun to get some stacking, so we should see our image get a little bit cleaned up here as we go through and get some further details here. So uh, let's talk about what we're seeing. So it's a spiral galaxy in the constellation Coma Berniceis. I'm probably mispronunciating that, but that's okay. You get the gist. And of course, it's commonly called the Black Eye Galaxy. You can see why. It's got a lot of dark dust there going around the central Core. Not too much dust in the outer um, spiral arms, but certainly enough there near the core, and oddly enough, only on one side, as you can go ahead and see. It is uh, magnitude 8.5, and I would say it's probably one of the better galaxies for you to go out and take a look at if you can get outside with a telescope. Now, right now, let's zoom out with our Sky Safari program. And we are live, by the way. We are observing, I'll, I'll start out with this here. Um, we are observing with the Celestron C8 telescope. Uh, we have a what's called a focal reducer on there. I'm not exactly sure what focal length I am operating tonight at. I would say I might be in the area of F4.8. 5 maybe and let's see we're using an ioptron ieq pro 45 mount and we're using a zwo 290 monochrome camera as our guide camera and we're guiding with another piece of software called phd guiding so that's a real quick run through of the equipment that i'm using and we have four stacks of our m63 here and it's coming along pretty well let me go ahead and, and adjust our image just a bit. Now I can, I, I'm adjusting some of the settings for the view so that you can really get an idea of why we call this the Black Eye Galaxy. And actually, if we move over, let's do that a little bit. We will move that over just a little bit there. Okay. So maybe that's giving you a good idea here of our view. Right there on the screen, you can see the image to the left there and our live image. This is a stack right now of about five 45 second exposures. So this is about as live as you can get for astronomy. We'll, we'll brighten this up just a bit here just to bring out as much detail as we can without blowing out the core. Let's adjust that a little bit more. There we go. We've got that going. So with galaxies, I always like to find out how far away these objects are. So let's take a look here. 17, ah, oh, that's not too bad. 17 million light years away. Oh, look at that. We had a, of course, we had probably a satellite go through there. Uh, that line that you're seeing is no doubt probably a satellite trail. Yep, they zip by all the time. 
and sometimes as uh, backyard stargazers we get the rather unlucky circumstance of having it go right through our little patch of sky that we happen to be imaging at the moment or sharing live I should say this isn't really astrophotography that I'm doing this is more or less what's called electronically assisted astronomy others might remember a term that has been used quite frequently I think it's a little bit older now called video astronomy well this is a progression of that this is how video astronomy has evolved into using these types of cameras CCD or CMOS cameras for doing live astronomy so that is what we're doing and let me go ahead and get a beautiful beautiful saved grab of this uh, right now before uh, anything else goes through the field of view and goes right in front of our galaxy but how cool is this folks so we are seeing we're going outside of the Milky Way galaxy and seeing a completely other galaxy right before our eyes. And as you can see with the satellite zipping on through, pretty much as live as you can get. So I sure hope those of you that are new to the channel can appreciate what you're seeing. It took the light from this galaxy 17 million years to reach us. And I'm trying to see what else we can find out about our galaxy here that is very interesting. Of course, it was discovered by Charles Messier in 1780. That's why it's Messier 64, the designation that you're seeing right here. That's a list of objects that a comet hunter, uh, I believe he was French, Charles Messier, um, listed out 110 objects and we in the amateur astronomy world we just use that list all the time that is definitely the most favorite list of astronomical objects out there now the other list here is a much bigger catalog it stands for new galactic catalog oh boy say something and I don't even know what it is so give me one second here to confirm that that is correct new general catalog I think if I memory serves me correctly that's how you know it's live too because we're not scripted I'm not an I'm not a professional educator or a professional astronomer uh, new general catalog that's what it stands for and it was composed let's see John Lewis ML Dreyer in 1888 and it, it was expanded upon by William Caroline Herschel as well as his son John Herschel so there you go lots and lots of objects in the NGC catalog so again, let's, um, let's switch back to a full screen view of just our wonderful program, our planetarium program here, Sky Safari. So basically, where are we looking? Well, if you face west and you go ahead and find the bright star, I think this is Arcturus. Yep, that is Arcturus there. And you can finally, let's see here, the tail end of Leo, the nebula, and Arcturus. So between the nebula and Arcturus, and slightly north, let's see what the closest, brightest star might be here for us. We're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to see Diadem. And that is in the Coma Bernicius constellation which we are looking. So that's about where we are in the night sky there with our telescope. That uh, blue rectangle there with north, south, east, and west noted. That's about where we are. We're looking uh, west here. Bright star to your south e south, I'm sorry, southwest. That's going to be Saturn over there. But Jupiter is the bright star to the southwest. And to the southeast is going to be Saturn. And you might notice here, we are looking towards the core of our own Milky Way galaxy as we go into the constellations of Scorpius 
and Sagittarius there, which is just full of interesting objects, but it's not full of galaxies. There's too much dust in the Milky Way for us to see through it and to see galaxies on the other side. So that's why we've got to look elsewhere and well, that's where we're looking for some galaxies. We'll probably go to the Sombrero next perhaps, but for right now let's go back to our live image of the Black Eye Galaxy. Now this one here got about 13 stacks and I tell you it's really coming through very very well tonight in my humble opinion and hopefully you are enjoying this whether you are seeing it live or whether you're seeing it later on pre-recorded either way I sure hope you consider subscribing to the channel and of course you can also find links to the blog at the eyepiece.org as well I put up some interesting things there in fact one of the things we just put up a few days ago was the Jupiter events for the month of July so if you're interested in tracking down the great red spot or if you want to look at Jupiter telescopically and see some other cool events such as shadow transits well that list is going to help you out once again that's at, at the eyepiece.org you can find out there for the month of July. That is, I'm actually surprised of how well the image is coming up. I didn't think it would be as dark and has as much contrast because again, we have quite a bit of thin clouds in the area. It's very humid here in Middle Tennessee as we approach the holiday 4th of July here. This area that we are looking right now, uh, again, as we go back to our image of just our Sky Safari app, um, if we look here, you can see that all of these notations that we are zooming in on, those are galaxies. And this is in the constellation Virgo that we are not quite centered on. Well, this view we are centered on, and we have a lot, a lot of galaxies to view. Uh, some are very easy to see with a small aperture telescope. Well, I shouldn't say very easy to see. Some are going to be visible in small aperture telescopes, maybe 4 inch, 80, 80 millimeter, um, from a dark sky sight. But if you're living in the city, well, you're not going to be able to see those things, unfortunately. But that's one of the other cool reasons why I like doing this, because it gives everyone the opportunity to go ahead and see some things that they probably, well, maybe not have seen before. And that's why astronomy is so fascinating. All right, let's go back to our... Uh, where's the... There we are. Okay, so we've got a lot of targets here that we can look at just for a brief review. And I think our next one's going to be a two for one. I say two for one because this is going to have two galaxies in the same field of view. So enjoy the view here for a moment. I'll let this continue to stay on the screen. This way, maybe folks that are just coming in on the channel, they get the opportunity to take a look at it. I'm going to actually stop my exposures, leave that up on the screen, and move the telescope before we're ready for the next object.
All right, so as you can see on the left of the screen, we are going to go to a NGC galaxy now, and it's called the Whale Galaxy. They call it actually the Whale and the Pup because you have the, the whale, it kind of resembles a whale, and then directly above it there, think of it as your calf or your pup, and that's where they get that name from. This was discovered by William Herschel in 1787, and let's see how far away that is as far as light years. Might have to go to the other page to see that. By the way, it is visual magnitude 9.8, so it's a dimmer galaxy than M64 was just before in the prior view. Let's go ahead back here and see. So actually, this one is 24 million light years away. So let's go ahead and see where we're at now with the scope. So say goodbye to M64, the black eye galaxy for right now. And coming up is going to be NGC 4631, the whale galaxy. Let's go over to, while we are waiting for that, let's go over, this is our application that we are using. This is Sky Safari. Let's zoom out again. So the black eye galaxy was right about here. Okay, so we are still facing west. I would guess that that's maybe about 40 degrees above the horizon, but I haven't looked to see how much exactly. Let's see if we can determine that. Okay, it's about 45 degrees above the horizon right now. And as you can see, it's not very far from the Black Eye Galaxy. Of course, that's just from our perception in the night sky. It is very far indeed from those galaxies as they, uh, uh, they are laid out in the night sky, but in, in our application here they appear much closer okay so let's go back to our I don't think I have talked about the camera that I'm using the camera is made by Starlight Express it is a Lodestar X2 monochrome camera and there was a fine gentleman by the name of Paul Shears. I believe he's in the UK. He created a fantastic program to use with this little camera. This actual camera is not even meant to take images like this. It's really meant to guide larger telescopes to take images. But this thing is very sensitive, and the program that Paul created is just fantastic at doing just what we are doing right now, which is called electronically assisted astronomy. And so I'm gonna leave this up. As you can see, here's our view of the whale and the pup. And this again is a 45 second exposure. So you can't get much closer. Look at that, it's almost at the same orientation too of the image that uh, was taken here by um, Adam Block, John Vickery, Jim Mathis, it looks like. Very, very cool. I loved getting actually groups of galaxies together. Um, the, there are just tons of galaxies in this area of the night sky. And galaxy groups or interacting galaxies is just a big, fascinating thing for me. And I sure hope it is for you as well. Maybe after tonight, seeing some of these cool things that you too could maybe track down from a dark sky site visually with some decent sized telescopes. Or if you wanted to get something uh, into astrophotography, I would certainly start out with a small aperture telescope, learn your way about around the night sky, learn how to use it, learn visual, first before diving into astrophotography because I will tell you it will be um, it's very technical for astrophotography stuff the things that I'm doing electronically assisted astronomy really isn't that difficult I'll be honest with you um, at least I don't think of course that's subjective right it, you might find it more difficult but you never know certainly if you see the video there of the observatory that I put up um, a little bit ago 
you'll get an idea of the equipment and what I'm using and where I'm broadcasting from and all that good stuff. So to some folks, it might seem pretty advanced. But it's really actually kind of modest equipment, to be honest with you. And that's coming through surprisingly well. Look at the dust veins going through that galaxy. It's an edge on spiral galaxy, so we're seeing it not quite at the same angle that we were with the black eye galaxy. We were able to we were able to see the black eye galaxy much more uh, face on, not not completely face on, but uh, more than what we're seeing here with the whale galaxy. I'm going to shut up and let you enjoy the view. I do also want to apologize a bit for the background noise that you're hearing. I am in a observatory and I do have the air running in here and the position of the computers happens to be right next to the AC unit itself, the window AC unit itself. So I do apologize if the audio is picking up quite a bit of that noise. The ambient noise but again that adds to the feel right of doing this live and we're not in a fancy professional observatory uh, we're just somebody like myself and an avid backyard stargazer that loves astronomy and loves sharing it with others to get you hooked on astronomy as well Thought we could use a little bit of brightening up on the image there. Hopefully that's coming through for you okay. Maybe a little bit more improved. I tend to like a little bit brighter background. Others tend to like to get that background as, as dark and black as possible. But I like to see a little bit of, of light to it. I guess that's just my preference in my eyes maybe as I'm getting older. But I think the galaxy, the two galaxies there are coming through very, very well tonight. For us. By the way, the little guy there that is above NGC 4631 is what's called the PUP, and that is 4627, NGC 4627. Right now, this is about 11 stacks of 45 second exposures. We are doing kind of a brief little show tonight. 
I'm not sure how many we will get nailed down here, but I am certainly going to go ahead and show you a few because, boy, there are still a good number of galaxies to look at here before they get too low. And one of my absolute favorites, we're going to do another two for one here coming up. It's going to be M51 here shortly. Let's get back to NGC 4631, the Whale Galaxy. In addition to this channel here uh, on YouTube, you may, if you are new to it, you may notice there that there are some uh, pre-recorded episodes of our podcast that we do from Spreaker.com. So Spreaker.com, you can listen to the podcast right from there. You can download it, I'm sure, to the audio device, whatever you want to listen to. Uh, you also have a way of listening to the, to the podcast um, not only from the YouTube channel here, but you can also roll on over to the at theipeace.org blog site. And right there at the top will be a listing for uh, listen to the at the IP show live. And that should open up Spreaker.com link for you and let you play the latest episodes there too. Once again, let's go back to our program, just our Sky Safari app program, our planetarium program that we're using. Let's zoom out. And again, to give you an idea of where we're looking, we're looking pretty much directly to the west, maybe a little bit northwest there, because you can see the tail end of the Big Dipper there. That's the pretty easy constellation for us to pick out. And you can see real good right about there, probably, where we're looking for the whale galaxy there. It's where that blue... Uh, rectangle is that's the indicator for where our scope is pointing. So we'll zoom in a little bit here, and then of course we'll go back to our image. Wrong image. <laughs> there we go. Boy, there's a lot of nice ones in here, man. The needle, the needle galaxy is another nice one. Maybe what we'll do here, oh, the Silver Needle Galaxy, you can just see all kinds of awesome galaxies in this area. Unfortunately, all of these things, well, not necessarily unfortunately, but this portion of the night sky is getting lower and lower towards the west as we progress through July and August, obviously, because our galaxy is rising, and there is just a ton of objects within our own galaxy to see, such as nebulae and cool objects such as globular clusters, plenty of open clusters as well. I myself usually tend to stick with globular clusters because I just don't get a very wide field of view with this particular scope and camera setup. So open clusters yeah, they're kind of hard to fit in the view. I think we're going to go up in a line here. We're going to hit the Sunflower Galaxy next. And then we're going to hit one of my favorite galaxies. So soak in the image there of the whale and the pup just for a moment while we get the telescope ready for our next object. I think you'll like this one too. not very far away from where we were at. Let's 
So in a moment, let's go ahead and get our first set of images. Again, we're just doing very brief 45 second exposures. You know, most astrophotography, they go ahead and they take exposures, well, gosh, minutes, two minutes, five minutes sometimes, and they stack these images and they also take these other images that help to clean up the actual image of the uh, object. Those are called flats, darks, and another thing called bias. And the astrophotographers do that and they, they put it into a program, they stack all these images up, they clean it up to get the most beautiful image possible. And sometimes they actually run it through two or even three programs to get a finalized image like the one that you're seeing on the left. We don't do that in electronically assisted observing or astronomy, whatever way you want to go ahead and say it. Um, we just kind of run it and do a couple of exposures and see what we got because we are observing these beautiful galaxies and things. So that's kind of what we do really quick. Oh, this is a monochrome camera. I should point that out as well. So we're not going to get color. Now, I'm a little bit, just a little bit disappointed in the way this one's coming up. But we do get a good sense of the spiral structure. I think it will improve here as we stack our images together. So wait there until you see the image get a little bit more improved here. Um, the reason that I don't use a color camera is because monochrome is just super, super easy to use. Uh, there's no adjustments for your color. You get, it's a more sensitive camera because it don't have, it doesn't have the debayer matrix on there for the, for the color to get represented in the CCD chip and, or the CMOS chip. And uh, it's just an easier experience for me. Okay, now, now those, those arms are coming out a little bit better, I think, here. Hopefully you on the channel, if, uh, if our broadcast is getting a good uh, speed up to YouTube, we're being able to pick that out pretty well. You're starting to see the spiral structure now in the arms. Our orientation, again, is almost exactly like the image there to the left. So this is Messier 63. This was number 63 on Charles Messier's list of 110 objects. And it's also in the new general catalog as 5055. And of course, it's nicknamed the Sunflower Galaxy. As always, I do like to try to get the distance to these galaxies because I think this is pretty cool. So as we are going down the line here, see what we can determine. This would be the furthest that we have seen so far. Um, M64 was 17 million light years away. Then NGC 4631, I think that's the one that we did. That was the pup that was 27 million light years away. And good old M63 here, the Sunflower Galaxy, is 37 million light years away. So, yep, it's pretty far. Let's see what our uh, magnitude is. Okay, magnitude 8.6. So we're getting back to similar range, if you will, for, mag or for uh, magnitude that um, the Black Eye Galaxy was, M64. I'm going to let this image just accumulate here. And let you enjoy the beauty of our universe. Well, actually, that's, that's still in our universe. Beauty of somebody else's galaxy, put it that way.
sure hope that the YouTube feed is coming through nice and clear for everybody. It's very hard for me to determine that. Get rid of that echo. Whoa. Get rid of that echo here. All right, let's save an image of this. All right, our next object, and maybe our last one here before I move on to a different site here, um, is going to be M51, my, probably my favorite, favorite galaxy for obvious reasons that you'll see here shortly. get rid of that so we don't <laughs> let the cat out of the bag too much. say goodbye to M63 and say hello here shortly and well in 45 seconds that is to the Whirlpool Galaxy M51 this, this was discovered again by Charles Messier in 1773 as we always like to do. Let's see how far this one is. Let's see here. We got some other info. Magnitude 8.4. So it's fairly bright for a galaxy. And this one is 23 million light years away. And we have image now. Bada bing, bada boom, there is our M51. Now that one's cool because while well, it's an interacting galaxy as well, you can clearly see the arm extending from the large spiral galaxy that is M51 on over to the other galaxy that it's interacting with, which is NGC 5195. So this isn't simply a line of sight deal that you're looking at. These two galaxies are interacting with each other gravitationally. Very cool. Ooh, that's a good one. I think that's a great way to wrap it up. So we're going to let this go here for a little while and you can enjoy this splendid view of M51. Now let me go over to our Sky Safari app real quick and we'll show you whereabouts this galaxy is. So let's zoom out because this one's actually pretty easy to find. Probably of all of the ones that we looked at tonight, was it, what's this been now? The fourth one, I think. Uh, this is probably the easiest. So if we go, we're looking a little bit further north than we have been. Northwest in particular. And if you look northwest, well, there's the good old Big Dipper. And if you follow the handle star to the end here, you'll see M51 below and to the left. And that is whereabouts we are in the actual night sky right now. Go back to our image here. That is
is really coming through really surprisingly well considering what I thought the conditions were going to be for tonight. Uh, just not a whole lot of transparency, but it looks like we might just have a clear run for a little while. Look at the spiral structure in that, the dust lanes there. And yeah, this one does come through pretty nice if it was a color, but hey, we are still observing it. So there's a color shot, quite a bit of blue as you can see there, more reddish tinge in the other NGC Galaxy. You can see why this is my favorite. Well, I think that's a phenomenal way of going out with this episode, going out with a bang, so to speak, uh, for the 4th of July. Have a safe 4th of July holiday tomorrow, and until we get another round of clear skies, I sure hope to see you next time right here at the Eye Police. Now, please don't forget, if you have any questions about anything that we did, uh, equipment or whatever, please feel free to leave a comment here on the channel. Um, also, you can send an email to at theipiece at gmail.com. And of course, don't forget to hit that bell. Hit that subscribe button for me. And subscribe to the channel because we put up um, as much astronomical related events and live things that we possibly can do. So thanks everybody for watching. See you next time at the Eyepiece.